What's up, witches, pagans, and other New Year's revelers of YouTube? It's me, your boy Shane. And I wanted to make a video today, um, kind of looking back on my witch-tastic accomplishments of 2020. Um, I made a video like this at the end of 2019. Um, I'm pretty sure it was actually my first YouTube video here. Um, where I kind of reflected back on 2019 and, and the things I had accomplished as a witch. Um, and I thought it was a valuable exercise, so I decided I'd make it like a, an annual tradition. Um, even though 2020 is kind of like the year that nobody wants to remember, um, everyone would much prefer to forget. Um, and it was a very, very rough year, but it did have some highlights, you know. So uh, just in the spirit of trying to cultivate, you know, that attitude of gratitude, finger guns, um, I thought I'd, I'd look back at, at, uh, you know, some of the, the, the high notes, right? Um, what did I do in 2020 as a witch? My coven, um, elevated before lockdown, before we all went into quarantine, um, in very, very early 2020. I think it was like the first week of March, right before everything shut down. Um, we elevated one of our coven members to second degree, which was really lovely. Uh, it's a very moving ritual. Um, it's one of my favorites. And like I said, that was a first for my coven. Um, it was also a first for me because it was a young man that we elevated. And I don't know if you know this, but in my tradition, most of our things are done cross-gender. Um, so because it was a young man um, getting second degree, um, I performed the, the bulk of the ceremony. Um, and it was an incredible experience for, for him, for me, for the group. Um, he absolutely deserves it. And, uh, you know, continuing his training and education and, and growth and development is really, uh, you know, it's a, it's a privilege. Um, and, and watching him take on additional responsibilities is just really beautiful. Um, so that was, that was a high point. Um, I've stuck with the YouTube thing. <laughs> um, I actually made 23 videos this year, um, and I had a lot of fun doing it, which is, you know, the most important part, I think. More than, you know, how many, uh, videos I cranked out, or how many new subscribers I got, or how many likes, or, you know, whatever. Uh, which is difficult to remember sometimes. Um, you know, social media, I think, has that way of kind of, uh, you know, getting us um, kind of riled up about engagement and numbers. And I, I, even I have to remind myself, like, it's not about that. It's just, I started this because I wanted to have, you know, worthwhile conversations about some craft topics and I have absolutely accomplished that and it continues to grow. Um, and I love that, so hooray. Um, I also launched a, a Patreon, I think in September, um, which is kind of very similar uh, in terms of like, you know, flavor and content and whatnot to this channel. Um, I write a lot about uh, magic and mental health, um, unpopular craft opinions, like, you know, when I just kind of throw up my hands and say, like, oh, what's a big deal, everybody? Get over it. Um, some recipes, some spells, you know, a little mishmash of things. Um, and a whole lot of me bitching about school, which is fun. Uh, and if that does not uh, convince you to subscribe immediately, I don't know what will, right? That's a really effective advertising campaign. Um, support me on Patreon and listen to me complain about school. Um, but no, it, it's, uh, like I said, it's some witchcraft and some life updates and some, a lot of me saying, you know, I wish I could write more about witchcraft when my life calms down. Um, and actually 2021 should be uh, a good time for that because, well, at least the first half of the year. Last semester, I did tackle um, <laughs> three courses in one semester, two of which were lab sciences. I will not be doing that again. Um, and this semester coming up for the spring, I'm only registered for one course. So I'm very excited to have a little bit of my life back, a little bit of free time back um, to create even more content, more videos, more writing on Patreon. 
Um, so I'm very excited about that, um, you know, looking forward. Um, this year, with everything locked down, uh, I obviously did not get to travel at all or go to any, um, you know, any of our gatherings or camping trips or, you know, just drive around in different parts of the country and harass my friends. Um, and that was tough. You know, I really, I miss the get togethers. I miss my family. Um, and, you know, a lot of us got on um, some Zoom calls throughout the year, um, which was lovely. You know, is it, uh, does it make up for not being together in person? Of course not. But it, it's something, um, and I think it helped all of us. It definitely helped me. So there were a number of Zoom calls that I got on with, um, you know, several high priestesses of my tradition where we got together and we talked about, like, things like, uh, <clears throat> you know, how are you handling, you know, having uh, coven meetings or not? Are you doing it virtually? How are you keeping your initiates or your students engaged? while all of this is going on? How are you taking care of them? You know, uh, how are you looking after each other's mental health? What training or what exercises uh, are you giving them? Or what books are you having them read during quarantine? Um, you know, uh, so it was great to be with some like-minded friends and people who are in the same, you know, leadership position as you and be able to toss out those ideas and to bounce off of each other and, and to feed off of each other. Um, and say, you know what, I, that would never have occurred to me. That's amazing. I'm going to try that. Um, so that was awesome. Um, some of the, the Zoom calls uh, and the video conferencing, the Microsoft Teams meetings and whatnot, were also about, um, you know, current political events and talking about, uh, and I made some videos uh, about that earlier this year, about uh, whether or not magic is um, appropriate for you know, political change or social justice, um, if it's practical, if it's possible, if is it ethical. Um, so we got some really great conversations out of that. And I think um, that was a highlight of 2020 as well. Because before that year, before last year, I don't know that we would ever have those conversations, um, you know, within our tradition or with, uh, as a, a group of friends even, um, or even as a group of witches. And that is, uh, you know, again, that's a worthwhile conversation to have. Um, on a more personal note, my own magic has taken a, a hard political turn um, this year, whereas uh, historically I've, I've kind of kept my magic separate from that. Um, even though I've always been a big believer in the fact that witchcraft is inherently political, um, you can't separate you know, witchcraft from the idea that we, as witches, uh, are on the fringes of society, right? We are, we are the other, we are not the mainstream. Uh, witchcraft was, um, you know, is a tool of the oppressed, not the oppressor, and all of that. I've always believed that ideologically. Um, but 2020 was probably the first year that I, I put it into practice and, and really, you know, um, put my money where my mouth is. Um, so I did a lot more political magic or I, I hate calling it political magic because again, you know, I've seen a lot of memes this year. That's like, you know, I, I, no, I don't unfriend people over politics. Politics is whether or not, you know, a stop sign should be installed at a certain intersection. We're talking about people's lives. And that, that's what 2020, what we were talking about people's lives, either people getting sick, um, in the pandemic or, people of color being murdered or whatever, right? So, um, you know, my magic, I don't want to say took a political turn, but, uh, you know, focused on um, some more of those really, really critically important issues. Um, I designed a number of spells and rituals uh, aimed at those purposes, um, invited a lot of people to join me. I made some videos about that. I put some a couple of ritual scripts, uh, you know, like spell instructions and stuff on Patreon. Um, and what I learned in doing that is uh, I really like ritual design. I really like spell design. And um, I haven't had a lot of opportunity to do that stuff in the past couple of years. Um, a lot of our, 
rituals in my tradition, you know, are prescribed, right? Like they, we get a lot of our rituals out of a book um, that's been handed down to us. And um, sometimes when we do magic and we don't feel like using material that's been handed down to us, uh, we come up with it collaboratively in circle. It's a, it's a consensus, you know, where we say, well, okay, the magic's being done for you. How would you like to raise energy? How would you like to do this? How would you like to do that? Um, and we kind of workshop it in circle. So I haven't had the experience of sitting down and writing spells or writing rituals uh, beginning to end um, for a long time. And I remember that I really enjoy that. So that was cool. Um, and in terms of my witchy accomplishments, that's really it. Like I said, we were all locked down for 2020. So, um, and that's, you know, it, it's okay. Um, in one of my Patreon posts, I talk about how a lot of uh, 2020 was a time of sacred inactivity. Um, kind of a larger scale version of what uh, a lot of witches practice between Samhain and Yule. And um, which I even extend longer. I like to do it from Samhain to Imbolc. And that's, um, you know, this is not time for go, 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 start a hundred new projects, right? This is a time for, like, deepening the connections you already have with your deities, with your coven mates, with yourself. Um, highly underrated. You know, this is a time for self-exploration, self-discovery, for quiet, for rest, for recuperation, for introspection, for journaling, for meditation, for dream work. You know, this is not a time to like I said, you know, hit the ground and, and be super active, you know, um, that's why I, I really, I, I won't say that I coined the term cause I'm sure a hundred people have, have come up with that phrase before me, but, uh, in thinking about this and writing about this, um, you know, I kept coming back to that, those words, sacred inactivity. And I, I really love that. That really resonated with me. So, um, you know, all of 2020 was uh, a time of sacred inactivity. Um, and that's okay. It's okay that I didn't, you know, accomplish 25 things. Um, and it's okay that you didn't either, in case you need the reminder, right? We all do sometimes. On the more mundane side of things, um, my roommate, who you have met, he's been on this channel, uh, moved in in the first couple of days of 2020. Um, Although I guess that's tangentially related, right? Because he's a witch too. Um, that's the first time that I've ever lived with someone that I haven't been immediately related to. So the first time not living with my parents, my sister, my ex-wife. Um, so the first time having like a roommate. Um, and it's been, you know, a pretty wild experience. Uh, I like to think that we're both learning from it. Um, the first half of the year, again, we're 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 heading into the more mundane uh, topics, but in the first half of the year, I really, really focused on rehabbing my knee. Um, I fractured my patella uh, at the end of 2019, and I went into the new year saying, if I accomplish nothing else this year, I must get this knee back uh, into good shape. Um, you know, and that was a whole lot of physical therapy, follow-up visits to my primary care guy, follow-up visits to my orthopedist, um, MRIs, different x-rays, different imagings. Did I mention physical therapy? My God, I went to PT before work. I went to PT after work. I went to PT before school. I went to PT after school. I went sometimes one, two, three times a week. Um, I did my exercises at home in my bedroom, you know, behind my closed door. I, um, it was a very scary time for me. I didn't talk a lot about it, but I, I was highly committed <laughs> to rehabbing my knee. And I did. Um, my knee feels exactly the same as it did before my injury. So, um, successful. Um, this year I also, um, I just mentioned school, right? I would say I would go to PT before and after school. I went back to school in January and I actually, with, um, within the year, finish my preclinical sequence for nursing school. And I don't pat myself on the back often, but I'm going to pat myself on the back for that. Um, 
And like I said, I'm still a preclinical student, so um, that was, you know, a whole lot of biology, anatomy and physiology, uh, statistics, algebra, trigonometry, psychology, human growth and development, um, knocked out all the classes that I would need before I start um, taking my uh, pre-admission exam and applying to the formal nursing program. Um, and again, really, I, uh, I'm going to pat myself on the back for that because it was a year of, um, you know, challenging mental health. It was a year of a lot of distractions, a lot going on in the world, a lot going on locally, a lot going on at my job. Um, and I was able to keep my head down and just kind of focus on school and power through it. Um, and, you know, my, my good friends and people closest to me were trying to drill it into my thick skull all year long. Like, hey, that's exceptional. Not everyone can do that. You need to recognize that. So I finally have. It only took me a year. <laughs> um, but um, the experience of school was great. I, again, learned a lot about myself in the process. I learned, um, well, I remembered that I love learning. Uh, I, I love being in school. I don't always like being told, hey, this is exactly what you have to study, or you must go at 9 o'clock in the morning, or, you know, all these other rules. But I love learning um, and just continuous continued learning I love. Um, and I learned that I love science. I always thought that I hated science. It turns out I just had some really shitty science teachers in the past. <laughs> um, so yeah, school. Um, I, uh, I, I formally changed my pronouns. I came out as non-binary at work. That was slightly terrifying, but again, I did it, um, th with a positive reaction with good results. So, um, that was amazing. Um, I survived my first surgery. Um, I had my gallbladder removed in August. Um, I believe I made a video while uh, my friends were here to come and kind of take care of me after surgery. So you guys may have seen that. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, after surgery, I attempted to go, if not vegetarian, at least pescatarian. Um, and I've I've been trying to do that for the remainder of 2020. Um, and into this year with mixed success. Um, it was much easier to give up red meat and pork than I had anticipated. Um, it, it's a lot harder to give up chicken as it turns out. It's everywhere um, and it's cheap. And I don't know, um, we'll see where that goes in the following year. But um, uh, yeah, that is, uh, like I said, a bit of a life update and a bit of, um, you know, like I said, my witchy accomplishments for 2020. Few and far between as they may have been, that is okay. Um, and so I'm looking forward to 2021, even though we're, what, I don't know, 13 days in at this point. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, I start school again in, in two weeks. Um, and yeah, and hopefully I'll be making more videos. Um, I hope you all are well. I hope you all survived the craziness of the holidays and the new year and um, the insanity that continues to go on um, in our government. Uh, I hope you're all taking care of yourselves, washing your hands, wearing your masks, drinking plenty of water, taking your vitamins, getting plenty of rest. It's so important. Getting a little bit of exercise. Um, really, I heart you all. And until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.